Yo guys, what's up? I got a game here between Lin and 120. This is from the Tet Cup 21. It's a weekly cup that puts up prize money in Asia that a lot of the top Korean and Chinese players play in. I think they have monthly finals as well. Tet, of course, is one of the uh, pro players from China, uh, undead pro players, who was really good back in 2006, 7. And then he became a full-time streamer. Looks familiar. Looks familiar to me. Uh, I think I've heard that somewhere before. But now he's a tournament organizer and streamer in China as well. So really cool to see. This game is between Lin and 120. 120, as I've said before, is the second best undead in the world behind Happy. And I feel like the gap is relatively big. In the past, the gap looked relatively small. They had a lot of series against each other. Sometimes Happy wins, sometimes 120 wins. I feel like Happy is a lot better. Uh, but... And then Lin is the best orc in the world right now. So it uh, should be normally slightly Lin favored, but in particular against Orc, I think that's one of 120's best matchups. He has outperformed Happy against Orc uh, at various times in the meta. So we're watching a best of three here between the two, and Lin has gone for a special build where he's gone for a Blade Master, <clears throat> an early Voodoo Lounge, and no barracks. So Lin always wants to switch up builds a little bit. He stole one of the uh, creeps here, the level 4 creeps, which is a lot of experience stolen. And he killed a ghoul as well. So he's actually the same level as 120, even though 120 used money from from the, uh, the Rod of Necromancy, and he used ghouls to creep with. Fantastic result for Lin. Lin is also going to try and pull this camp into the other to make it harder to creep. I don't know how effective this is going to be. I think the leash distance is too far to really matter. We see an ensnare and a little bit of... Yeah, maybe the Forest Troll Berserker hit the ghoul like until 60% life and that's about all. He's just trying to do whatever he can to make this creeping a little bit more complex and less worth it. So let's talk a little bit about where the game can go from here. As we see from 120, ghoul opening, very standard right now. In the past, sometimes that would transition to fiends. But as of late, Undead has just been sticking with Ghoul Statue Destroyer. Maybe you add Banshees, but I haven't really seen a lot of other modifications to Ghoul opening. Fiends don't see as much play. Even when it's against wind, uh, Wyverns or Windriders, I should say, we haven't really seen that much fiends. Even to like add one, two fiends with web, not really the choice. They use Orb of Corruption on Death Knight. Maybe they use Alchemist Third. And they just try to use heroes and maybe one or two destroyers to counter Wyverns. If Wyverns start coming out in really high numbers, you can see Gargoyles being added. And so we have a Blade Shadow coming out here. Uh, haven't seen a lot of Blade Shadow Tier 3 tech, to be honest, for, uh, for any orc recently. There are many different variations of orc play against undead. We have the focus style, which is Farseer Shadowhunter with tier 3 and mass wyverns. So this looks a little reminiscent of it, but it's different because it's with Blade Master first. And then we have the uh, Farseer Tarn Chieftain Moss Headhunter style. We have Blade Master Grunt Raider Kodo style with Shadow and then TC third. But we don't see a lot of Wind Riders with Blade Shadow. There's a reason for it as well. Wyverns or Windriders are ranged. Farseer and Shadow are ranged. So you've got a lot of focus fire uh, at a distance. Blade is melee and therefore he becomes a necessary tank in order to do any damage. And that puts him very isolated on the ground by himself against potentially large skeleton and ghoul numbers. It can be risky for him. But it's also kind of a luxury because he's the highest armor class that you can have for Orc. More than every other hero and more than any other unit. So... If there is going to be one melee tank, not the worst, might as well be him. So is it going to be Wyverns? Yes. Wyverns already in production. Sorry, I still prefer the Reign of Chaos turn Wyverns. So Shadowhunter comes in. He hexes the Death Knight. Hex has a number of potentially unintended interactions. Because a unit gets changed to a critter for the time being, it's actually coded as a different unit. It's not... Like, it remembers the stats that the Death Knight has, but momentarily it's not a Death Knight, it's a sheep. So it doesn't get any experience, and it doesn't get any mana regeneration. It even loses its aggro status, which means if you want to focus fire someone that's hexed, you need to issue another attack command on them, because if you attack move, 
It's going to attack the sheeped Death Knight last. It sees every other unit as more of a threat, rightly so. So there are a number of interactions. So you come in with the shadow, you see that someone is creeping. Oh, lovely! Lovely, he kills the troll berserker. So anyway, the undead is about to like take the creep. So you hex the hero so that even if they kill it, they don't get experience. Right, the Death Knight doesn't get experience. And that's what he did against the level 5 Sasquatch. And 120 still decided to finish the Sasquatch. This time, 120 is like, you can fool me once, shame on you, but you can't fool me twice again. Doesn't finish the Berserker. Shadow comes in, last hits it. So there's that. So technically, if you think you're going to get hexed as the undead or as the defending player, you should leave the creep on two hits away from finishing. So Shadow can't one hit it while DK is hexed. Uh, and then you come in and you uh, you hit it with all your ghouls and DK at the same time. So Lich died as there's no town portal on DK. That's something 120 sold. There was no coil left and with a little bit of hex focus fire. Lin gets some results. In my experience, if you come in and hex during this time and you don't get the hero kill you kind of regret it you wish you were creeping instead but if you get paid off with the hero kill it's totally worth it so lin is getting some good levels now he's level three two uh 120 did deny his own lich i think he killed it with frostmorn so a small victory for him but so far everything has been going lin's way so where does it go from here lin is getting a fortified tower i think in the middle of the map no no no, no. okay I thought I saw a block here, but it was his units on the minimap. So he's uh, making a watchtower at home, just in case there's going to be like a timing attack for Undead. Usually if Undead is going to do a timing attack, it comes out somewhere between the 8.30 to 9.30 minute mark. So you see it's 8.30 now, that means the watchtower is quite well planned and timed. I think any timing that 120 would have done, hypothetically, would be later than normal just because uh, Lin has been having good results. The Lich died, so 120 had unforeseen expenses. I think that pushes his timing maybe to 10 minute 20, uh, the earliest. Nonetheless, he's posturing aggressively now, representing, I believe, a bigger intimidation than he actually has. What? He sold both true shots? I know True Shot is 7% bonus damage instead of 10%. It's nerfed. Maybe he just doesn't rate it that high anymore. And it kind of makes sense. Every single Wyvern benefits from it. And Shadow, but Blade TC do not. But Wyvern have like 45 piercing damage. They get 7% increase on that. Not bad. Um, that's... That's 3 damage. Which is decent, honestly, right? 3 damage per Wyvern still gets mitigated by armor so let's say it's gonna do two damage so it's like eight to ten damage per salvo extra after uh, deductions that's decent right but instead he can get 200 gold and he can get more investments now whatever he's making he's getting war drums upgrade kodo headhunter another burrow and in the long course true shot does a lot but selling it now maybe he feels like it gives him more more consumables uh, clarities and whatnot and to be fair, True Shot used to be 10%, but it and many other items got nerfed. So it's 7% now. It's not as good as before. Before it would have been 5 damage extra, maybe. 4, 5. Now it's 3. So. Interesting, though, that he sold both. I would have definitely kept one. I will say that Wyverns get most of their damage from Venom Spears. Or at least some of their damage. Anytime a unit does a special attack, such as Wyvern Poison... Uh, Dryad Poison, oh, Tauren Pulverize, all of those have less benefit from attack upgrade by comparison. It's not that it's less in general, it still does what it does. But you gotta think that part of the threat of the unit has been co-designed with the special attack in mind. So, relatively by comparison, the, uh, the attack upgrades are worse. You'd rather armor the unit so that you can get as many of those special attacks off as possible. Having said that, wyverns don't really combine that well with armor either. I usually prefer just to have more of them. Having more wyverns means you'll still have some if some die. It also means that 
you um you have more things to heal scroll at the same time it means that you're putting in more poison on different units at the same time it means that if some get webbed others will not be webbed so that you can still move and focus fire these are all some of the reasons for it if i were to choose upgrades i would probably get one attack upgrade then one armor or one armor then one attack but not a lot more of course in the past i used to go like mass wind riders with three attack upgrades it felt great but that's from a different time where timings were worse where uh, threat was like lower from undeads it was more imbalanced uh, people were worse in general so now i see okay uh he's added a barracks and got berserker training upgrade he's getting he's, he has one level spikes he's not getting any warmer upgrades and saves up 1500 gold with a tiny great hall and then once he has 1500 he got the tiny great hall and at the same time started a bat a kodo and a wyvern i could not have predicted the exact tempo that lin is doing here it makes sense that he has a tower at home so that he can be more greedy and save up more gold as undead is not going to want to attack into it as much pretty even creeping by both so you've got similar levels picked up a very good item brilliance on shadow shadow is somewhat exposed doesn't have invul doesn't have heal pot no stat items level three he's naked in front of the army of undead if there is some kind of coil novas around and a silence on uh shadow hunter he could be a really big target to take out i don't know how 120 is gonna manage the micro probably try to web something and kite back there's a pretty nice war stomp silence was too late those are the kind of silence happy does better than 120 it was stomped then silence kind of useless because he already stomped there's nothing left to silence does kill the kodo nice job by 120 some wyverns that's a bat getting webbed getting focus fired uh mirror image a pretty interesting choice uh removes curse i suppose and a bit of a tank as well the image so he transitions away from wyverns into a full ground army lin has money is he gonna make kodos raiders or more wyverns i wonder it's such a weird combo to go for wyverns and kodo uh wyverns and headhunters it's not that i've never had the combination it's just that wyverns can't be attacked in the air for a short period that is their special dimension their happy place their safe place but headhunters can be if some of your friends like if your goal is to stay alive with all of your friends during a a trip in the savannah and some of your friends are dying to lions and the rest of your friends are hiding in the tree and you're hiding in the tree there's no point right the objective is everyone lives so that whole air di dimension of wyvern doesn't matter anymore once you start putting boots on the ground i'm actually kind of in shock how well that fight went for 120 didn't think his fight into it was that good but every unit on the ground that dies turns into a skeleton curse is massively reducing dps uh wind riders wyverns obviously uh doing less damage as well with curse on them some of them got wet like i feel like that fight wasn't even close i really didn't expect that but having seen that retroactively i feel like the expansion was the wrong play and kind of in advance as well you know sometimes when i watch lin i suspend disbelief and i re even quell the thought that this might not work i'm like oh you know it's wyvern and headhunter that's kind of weird together but uh you know if he's doing it probably it's gonna work or whatever i guess i should try to be a bit more objective and try to make a prediction about what's gonna happen in this case like i feel like this always happens against the top undeads once you tiny great hole somehow they sniff it out they know they attack and it hasn't done enough for you let's say that instead of 1500 gold goes into tiny great hall and like three to five units let's say instead it would do he would do just a full army go straight to 70 population and then it's not like he can attack but he can win a neutral fight if 120 nonetheless attacks or he can start very slowly saving up for an expansion at 60 70 pop it's a much worse economic proposition but at least you've got a badass army 
He could have also decided not to expand nor go over 50 and go for a Rax and a Torrent Totem. Prepare Berserker Tech. Prepare Walker Tech, considering he could use Mirror Image to scout out the Temple of the Damned, which he did, by the way. So he knew Banshees are coming. And then he could try to get some Disenchant to remove some of that curse. It removes curse. It removes silence. It removes black minions. Sorry, dark minions. Black arrow, dark minions. Black minions. Dark minions. Don't bro me. Got Potion of Healing, Invulnerability Potion. And here comes the defense. 55 against 60 population. Is he just going to hero focus? Nope. Big Nova on the Berserkers. He did turn on the Berserker uh, Berserker thing where they take bonus damage and attack faster. I don't feel like it's worth it. I don't think their attack on Death Knight merits the attack speed. Look how they're not focusing anything good until now. Makes me feel like you should actually never ever turn on Berserker mode on, on, on Berserkers. You turn that on, they hear... Let's just immediately Frost Nova's hit. They take damage. It's terrible. So if I, if I were to do a couple of different things, get the totem, try to get one or two walkers, and uh, don't use Berserker training. But I did like how having the Wind Riders gave Lin a strong creeping army and a small little timing window around the time that second heroes come out where he felt a little stronger. This is something I would like to build on, potentially. Even though this looks very recognizable, like this face in the game where yeah, the undead army starts overcoming. Very good start for Lin. You can barely ask for better, but perhaps not a perfect way to play out the game. Interesting. Let's watch the second game as well. Put this over here so you guys can see the heroes. Okay, let's go to game number two. Game number two. Is he going to play the same build, Lin? And uh, no, he's not. It's far seer this time. I guess I could put chat here. Um, Everybody's so you guys happy. can see everything. Happy. <laughs> Thank you guys for the subs. Put chat over here for now. All right, let's see what's gonna happen this game. Farseer, Warmill, 17 pop, fast tech. Fast forward a bit. See a bit of creeping. Okay. So, first thing he does, he goes for the turtle. And 120 is here and it's going to interrupt it. I think he's just going to force it, knowing there's going to be a coil, but just wanting to get the item. And he doesn't get the item either. 100% he's like, ah, I already invested in this. At least I'll get the item. But then his wolf died. DK could just sidle up nice and close. Coiled it, got it. And it's just horrible now. He denies his own Feral Spirit, which means DK does not get level 2 yet. But it's night and day the difference this game and last. And let's see if uh, Lin can come back the way that uh, 120 came back from the start last game. Thank you for the sub, Orp Original. Appreciate it. You too, Xhawk. No, Elf isn't rank 1 yet, Rob Clark. What's so controversial about this best of three? I don't know. Someone recommended this and said it cost a stir. I don't see the stir. I, don't, I think we got... We have the wrong stories, Zon boy. But let's just watch and enjoy it as a high-level series. Gets one ghoul kill. Yeah, not much he can do with Farseer now. He can stay here, he can try to auto-attack Death Knight. But with the move speed differential between DK and Farseer, every time Farseer hits DK, DK's gonna hit Farseer. And that's just not worth it. Because there's Unholy Aura. Additionally, you can just sick one of those skeletons on the Farseer. Takes you like 8 seconds to kill it, and then he just runs away, you get nothing for it. Meanwhile, DK knows where you are, you're not chasing him. DK gets to creep, uh, or choose his direction away from you. So Lin is going to go... Ah, this build again. Okay. This is the 
double bestiary totem. He made this build like four months ago. FSTC, double bestiary, and totem. So what happens is you go for a raider. I found this build to be very strong. Also a new build of last year, 2023 build. Never done before. So what you do is a raider and then snare at the same time. You get a walker. So you've got a very quick raider with ensnare, the fastest possible. You've got a to uh, totem coming up with a walker who dominates early game prior to destroyers coming out. It means nothing can die from arc. You try to hunt a couple of units, maybe a hero or whatever. And then you kind of take this fast expansion and you go bat riders and walkers. Bizarre, but walkers basically destroy ghouls. And Link destroys nukes in, in how they they spread the nuke damage, which means uh, you won't lose like your first here in a single coil and all and some focus fire. Oh, it's double raider this time. Uh, maybe it was double raider. I mean, you could do either one, I suppose. Double raider or one raider and then snare. So anyway, you get bat riders and walkers. And the bats pre-counter the destroyers that would be coming out and the walkers kill everything else now one time when i blind copied this build just blind make it right oppo went crypt fiend switch the fiend and then it doesn't work it works specifically better against ghoul destroyer there's a guard coming out there's a one wind rider oh yeah one wind rider Raider and Snare, one Wind Rider, Walker, Expo, and then Bats. Just like this. Why do Walkers destroy Ghoul? Magic damage against uh, Heavy Armor is a 200% multiplier. They do like 20 damage, so against Ghouls, 40. That's a lot. Ghouls like to pick off one unit by one unit rather than spreading. Spirit Link prevents that. And Walkers are tanky. They have four to 600 mana, 400 when they come out, 500. They have a pretty good health. Uh, they're tanky. They just destroy ghouls. In what way do they? All the ways. Isn't it 150? No, it's 200. 200%. 200 Destroyers, walkers, doctors, shamans, chimera. They all do double damage on uh, grunts and ghouls. So now there's ensnare. Two gargs out. What's he going to ensnare? He's going to go for the lich. Easy surround with proper micro. He's gonna lose his Wind Rider, perhaps. It's been linked, but he can just sick it. One ensnare on Gark means the Gark dies. Wind Rider can maybe survive if he walks over and snare. That would be pretty big if he gets both of these. Oh my god. Oh, oh, interesting place. He can't get to that again. The Wyvern could attack the Gark, but no follow up uh, and snare would be coming out. He's, he's hoping that the Gark gets re ensnared by the creep. It doesn't. So the expo's here. We have uh, a burrow coming out, walker training, and Lin doesn't have his burrow ready on time, so he can't make bats yet. I feel like his fourth burrow is late. It's halfway, and he has 400 gold. So let's say it was probably 15 seconds late, which may actually come to cast him, since uh, he won't have enough bats early enough. He's losing production time. He's got one. But what about second bat? What about second bat chest? So the burrow finally is going to be finishing. No fortified defenses yet. And no infrastructure to defend at the expo. That's a coil nova on Windrider. I feel like if he ensnared Lich earlier and focused it, he would have maybe killed Lich. Ah, Lich has invulnerability potion. Okay. So there's the walker dead, so that walker is no longer killing ghouls. Ghouls are destroying raiders. I feel like he has too many raiders. One or two. Two feels like the sweet spot. Three feels like uh, a crowd. And now there's frost armor on the statue, so it's not easy to kill anymore. Shockwave actually helps a lot there. Yeah, this doesn't feel good. Lin isn't even making bats. He's so busy dying that he has no time to prepare for not dying later. Uh, may be able to get the destroyer with a single auto attack. That's pretty unfortunate. Oh man. So is he making bats? No. 
Yeah, I don't think Lin executed this game that well. Very late to produce from his bestiaries. By the way, if I watch my own replay, I'm going to be a lot more critical. <laughs> There's mistakes like this in every game. But, uh, yeah, busy dying, didn't make bats. If he had enough bats to kill all destroyers, yeah? He still has to deal with the fact that he's level 2-3 against 4-2-1. And that he has heroes that excel at killing army, Farsi or TC, against heroes that excel at killing you, DK Lich. So when it comes down to a bare bones, brass knuckles, fisty cuff, DK Lich beats FSTC. And it's generally up to the army of Orc to try and lock down and kill the heroes. Berserkers and Wyverns being the highest damage to kill heroes. And uh, Raiders for control. But really he doesn't have great hero killing capabilities. Uh, finally some bats, but again, not fully optimizing his production timing. There's a bat, blows up, doesn't do anything because <laughs> the shore wasn't low enough. Yeah, this should be pretty over. I don't know who recommended this uh, series to me, but <laughs> it's despair for Orc. Pretty good series. I even heard uh, Remo Demo in the background who's casting this, even though he's undead and mostly a mo bit more undead focused. He said it didn't really feel too fair. Uh, I think game one did feel a little undead favored, but this game, there's too big of a gap in execution uh, that I can't really say that Lin deserved to win either. Game one, maybe. A few small things. Good series, though. Fun watching. Hope you enjoyed the cast. GG.